stand as we begin this morning. One. Oh, some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away, where well, I fly away, oh glory. I fly away when I die. This morning, dear God, we thank you for today. Um, God, we thank you once again for the opportunity to to come and just to worship in your house. God, we thank you uh, for the cooler weather this morning. We thank you for the rain last night. God, just be with us in both services today, God, um, that they would be glorifying your name as we sing your praises, as we open up your word, um, and as Brother Kim shares from his heart. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Um, as this is Father's Day, um, we have a a short video that we would like to show this morning um, commemorating our fathers.
So once again, if you're a father or you're just a father figure, we thank you for setting the example this morning. Um, then as we enter in this time of worship this morning, and we want to continue to worship um, our Father, our true Father, our Abba. And so as, as we do that, and as we worship that, let's just worship that wonderful, beautiful name of Jesus. Join us as we sing this morning, you were the word at the beginning. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus that together. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. Silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life. Have no rival, you have no rival, you have no equal now and forever. God, you reign, yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance 
from my enemy till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer But I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. But I am a child of God. From my mother's womb this morning. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer. Stand with us as we sing this morning. You split the seat so I could walk right through it. Let's worship the King. You split the sea so I he comes this morning giving your words to speak not of his own God I pray that this morning that our hearts would be broken for what breaks your heart this morning God 
God, give us an open mindset to change as we go through these times and as we figure out new and different ways to minister. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen, everyone. It's so good to see you this morning. Welcome to everyone who is here this morning. Thank you so much for the privilege of being here. Um, uh, just to kind of preface my message today, uh, when we had Mother's Day, uh, Mother's Day, we had parking lot church. I was just so excited to see all of you guys. Uh, I forgot everything about Mother's Day. I get home and I get the snake eye. What? Fake news. Fake news. All morning she kept saying. I kept looking at her and she kept looking at me funny and I thought, what did I do? What did I do? Well, mothers, happy Mother's Day to you. I apologize for that. And the way I'm going to do that, take your Bibles and turn to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Genesis, Exodus. And in Exodus chapter 20, look at verse number 12. Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 12. Listen to what the Bible says. And all of our young people, I hope that you'll listen really good this morning to what the Word of God says to us because I think it'll merit you and it'll merit your life uh, for uh, the many, many years to come. The Bible says, ex Exodus tw uh, 20, 12, if you got it, say, I got, I got it. All right. Honor your father and your mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. God gave us some commandments. Those commandments were very important and very vital to life. The first uh, four deal with uh, our relationship to God. The last six deal with our relationship to humanity, to other human beings. And so as we do that, the first thing that he says, one of the most important things is, here's how we're to begin this life as we live our lives. Honor those that have brought you into this world. Honor those who have given you life. Honor those who have taught you and given you wisdom. Honor those who have given you the very best of what they are for the sacrifices that's been made, for all the things that's going to honor them with your life by living a life that would honor them. So today as we do that, I hope that you'll cling on to that verse. Hope that verse is underlined, scored in your Bible. Hope that that verse is something that's very important to give honor to those to whom it's due. To give honor to those to whom much has been given. I can't thank my folks enough. I can't thank my parents enough. And though when we left here uh, many, many years ago, God gave me more parents. God gave me more moms and more dads through the years that have encouraged me and helped me. I like what Cole said this morning. Maybe you're not not a, a, a biological parent, maybe you're not a biological mom nor a biological dad, but you are a parent to someone and they love you and we're grateful for your life. Thank you so much. Now I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of John now. Here we're going to go uh, and I preface that my, my message with in, to look in John chapter number 2. John chapter 2. Jesus had just, in John chapter 1, had just called his, it was six disciples. Two of them had been, or three or four of them had been following with John the Baptist, and they left John the Baptist and began to follow after Christ. We talked a little bit about that last week when we talked about getting into the boat and launching out the boat. Peter was one of those who launched out in the boat. He was a fisherman. And we find, we, we realize how important this is. This is another day in the life of Christ. I hope this summer to give you things that will encourage us as we walk every day with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a daily grind. It's a daily walk. It's not something that just happens once a week. Folks, if we're not doing it Monday through Saturday, then you can't do it on Sunday. Amen? Amen? you got to do it more than that. It's got to be more than that. And the Lord wants more from you. And I want you to realize that. That's why when, when I began to pray last week about you getting and I getting into the boat, that the Lord would launch out. That's my prayer, that we would launch out into the deep. You see, the Lord knew that, out, that the fish were out there in the deep. And, and Peter, being a fisherman, he said, Lord, they're not in the deep. They, 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 we catch them in the shallows. But the, the Lord knew better. And I want you to know the Lord always knows better. John chapter 2, verse 1, listen to what the Bible said. The third day, I like that. The third day is another thought process that goes forward into where in three years later, after three days, Jesus rose from the grave. Amen? 
after three days. So the third day, the third day that they had met Nathaniel, that they had met uh, the disciples, after the third day that Jesus had met those guys and called them to be disciples, there was a marriage in Cana. And the Bible says of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. For some reason, Jesus had been invited to a wedding. He had been invited to a festivity. Now, here's what I want you to realize. These festivities lasted for seven days. Now, I've been around many of you mothers and many of you dads who have done weddings for your children. I've been doing that for many years. And instead of seven days, it lasts for seven months. Can I have an amen? Oh, man, it's a, it's a long, we've got to get everything right, everything's got to be just right, and if it's too hot or if the cake melts or something happens, man, we're in a tizzy. And, and you know what? It only takes about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at tops to get somebody married. Amen? I mean, it don't take long to do that, but we want all, everything to be just right. We've done all those things, uh, and, and uh, uh, so, so just key in on that. This was a marriage. It lasted seven days. It was a process of seven long days of, of sir, something happened every day. And so uh, a, a virgin in, in the Jewish world was to be married on a Wednesday. So we find it begins on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is the third day. So this would be on Saturday of those wedding activities. Saturday was the Sabbath day. Saturday was the day that they came to worship. Saturday was a very important day. And so we find Jesus and the disciples and his mother was there. And so they all came to this exciting thing. It's a joyful time. It's an exciting time. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a free-spirited time. It's exciting. There's a lot of things that go on during those things. And so we find that the Bible says in verse 2, And both Jesus was called his disciples to the marriage. They were invited to. He was a social guy. He came socially. He wasn't a recluse like John the Baptist. John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness. John the Baptist hung out. He wore, he, he ate uh, uh, um, grasshoppers and, and wore uh, uh, long clothes and had long hair. And, you know, he was just a wild-looking dude. He, he was something else. But Jesus was a social fella. He made, he made his point to be there at that wedding. It was very important. may have been family. May have been close friends, but whatever it was, Jesus' mother was probably helping take care of that. Many of you mothers have helped other mothers with weddings. You've helped them minister and take care during that period of time. It's been very, very important. So it's very important. And I said all that to say that this is an exciting time in the life of that young couple. Uh, they may have been poor because Jesus' family was pretty poor. It may, they may not have had the means to, to do everything for those seven days. But for whatever reason... We find Jesus had been there, and we know the reason. The Bible says in verse 3, when they wanted wine, wine is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's a symbol of joy in the New Testament. It's a symbol of joy. Folks, we need to understand there needs to be joy in a believer's life. Isn't that right? Amen? There needs to be some joy in here. We, and that's something the world didn't give you. Bless God, the world shouldn't be able to take it away from you. Our joy down deep inside of our heart. And the Bible says, and, and, and the, 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 they wanted wine. The mother of Jesus said to them, son, they have no wine. They're running out of wine. It's about to be gone. And that would be such an embarrassment. Even in those days, that young couple could have been sued by those in the community because they ran out of wine. And that wouldn't have been a good start for that young couple. That wouldn't have been a good start for that young couple to begin their lives with and to begin their livelihood. They would have had a stigma against them. And so the scripture says Jesus looked at her and he said, woman. Now he doesn't call her mother. John doesn't ever speak uh, of Jesus' mother calling her Mary. He always speaks to the mother of Jesus in the book of John. So Jesus looks at his own mama and he says, woman. Kind of like, what do you mean, lady? What, you know, just exasperated. Woman, what have I to do with you? He says, my hour has not yet come. You see, there's a a specific timetable that Jesus was on. Three years he began his public ministry. He's now in the public, and he begins his public ministry, and he begins something very special as he speaks to us, and he shares those things to us. And so, so the Bible says, woman, what am I going to do with you? Uh, you know, my hour's not yet come, but God knew there would be a time that his hour would come, the resurrection three years into the future. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. It's a joyful time, even though it was a sad time. 
for us today, uh, it's bittersweet when we come to someone's death. It's a very, especially for a, a family member that loves the Lord, that's going to be in heaven. We know that it's bitter because they won't be with us anymore, but it's sweet because we know there is no longer any pain, any sorrow. I, I've had two funerals this past week. One was a pastor's wife who had passed away last Sunday afternoon on his way after he got home from church and, and she died. I, I, over at Pocahontas, I, I did her funeral on Thursday and yesterday. Uh, we had another funeral for a dear, dear lady, and we're just praying for those families too. So remember those families. And also this week, Miss Louise Hill has passed away. If you did not know that, and she passed away, and we'll have her funeral this midweek sometime. They're not really sure yet yesterday, as of yesterday. So pray for them. Pray for these families. So, so there's joy. And these joyful things that happen are very important to us. And so Jesus begins to look at her and he says, Woman, mine hour is not yet come. For he says in verse 5, His mother said to the servants, Now get this, I've been given a lot of advice in my life. Some from my dad, some from my mom, some from many of you. Some from you who have told me, oh, Brother Kim, that's not a good way to do that. Brother Kim, you wait, might ought to wait on that. Brother Kim, let's think about this. Brother Kim, let's do this. And I've gotten a lot of advice. All of us in this room have been given advice. I have saw many pictures of families today whose fathers had passed on and they wish they could just spend one more day, one more hour, one more minute. I miss you. I love you. And, and that's understandable. I get that. Because as my parents continue to age and things get long, I know those times will be short. I know they'll be very short. But Jesus looks out and Mary, the mother of Jesus, gives the greatest advice that was ever given to anyone in the world. The greatest advice ever given to anyone in the whole wide world. I don't want you to miss this because it's very important. Mary, the mother of Jesus, gives her son, or gives those men who were there with Jesus that day. Now, I don't know what the greatest advice you've ever been given, but my prayer is that you will listen closely. And the Bible says these words. He, she says unto those men standing there, the servants, she says these words. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Whatever he says, do it. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. And those men look, standing there looking. Now, these guys are probably family members. They're servants. They're, they're, they're there to help at the wedding feast. And, and, and Mary and Jesus have been talking, and he's been speaking to her and, and kind, of, kind of saying, Mom, it's not really time yet. Mom, I, I really wish you'd wait. I, 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 but, 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 Mom, okay. And she looks at those men, and she says, Hey, fellas, right here. Everybody look. Whatever my son says to do, you do it. You do it. Now, why is that important? Because we're literally looking at and speaking to and talking to the Word of God made flesh. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning, God. Jesus became a man. God became a man and became one of us. And now she is saying, this is my son. He is the son of God. So whatever he says, you, you, me, us, we, do it. Do it. So here's what happens. The Bible says, and there were set six water pots of stone. Now, they weren't made out of clay. They would have been porous. But these old water pots of stone were, were probably in the background, kind of like I've got them over here today. I've got, I don't have six uh, uh, stone water pots, but I've got six five-gallon buckets. I've got six five-gallon buckets. Now, now, folks, this is Arkansas. We don't have stone water pots, all right? Uh, but now I've seen them, but we've got six water pots, if you will, over here on our table to the right. Now, now here's what happens with And after the manner, uh, uh, he, says, he says, and after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Now, now this, these water pots were, were used for, to be ceremonially clean. They wanted to make sure whenever they did anything, they would clean themselves. They washed themselves. They would use that for a purpose. It had a specific purpose for the Jewish family. And they were all there, probably in the back corner. Probably nobody ever mentioned them. Nobody ever saw many of them. But Mary and Jesus may have been away from everybody and says, 
Fellas, whatever he says to do, you do it. And she begins to tell him. Now, they hold between 120 and 150 gallons of water. Okay? Very heavy pots. These pots in excess of themselves are heavy. And so they're very bulky. And so they grab them. Those men grab them. I don't know. Someone said it as I was reading it this week and studying. It said about 20 guys probably were helping with this. And so all these men were servants, and they all gathered those things up and took those six water pots, took it to the edge of town, went to the well where they at the edge of town, would reach down to the water with the bucket and pull that up and fill those water pots. They did exactly what Jesus said to do. Now, uh, Cole, if you will, would you guys help me move these over here to the front? You guys, thank you. Whatever Brother Kim says to do, you do it. All right. No teasing i'm just teasing but but i asked him to, to move those water pots for me so you can see them really well i want to make sure that you guys see those water pots because they're very important because inside those water pots inside here is a, is a representative now now this five gallon bucket full of water weighs 42 pounds okay so let's just think if there's six of those between 20, 120 and 150 pounds you're talking a lot of weight here now, these guys had a burden to bear, okay? They, it, was a, it was a tremendous burden for them to go do what they've been asked of them to do. You see, guys, I want to understand, what we do in life is not easy. Life is not easy. Life is, is not easy at all. Uh, 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 hit me Colossians chapter 3, guys. Give me, can you find that for me real quick? Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, uh, the scripture tells us in verse 23, Colossians 3 and 23, uh, the Bible says these words. He says uh, to, to us who are here today. So whatever you're doing, here's what I want you to get. Don't miss this. Whatever it's been said to do, do it, okay? Whatever's been said to do, I want you to do it. And that's what I, I'm at, the Lord asks us to do. Mary tells us this. This is what we're to do. And so they do it. They begin to do it. Colossians chapter 3, look at verse 23. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, okay? Keep going to your right. Can you found it yet? Colossians 3 and 23. The Bible says these words. Got it? Okay, yep, very good. He tells, it's not on my screen up here. That's what I was looking for. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Okay. He says, and whatever you do, do it heartily. Do it to the very best of your ability. Whatever you do, I don't care what it is. Whatever you do, you do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Now think about this. Jesus had asked those guys to do something very important. Or his mother did. And his mother asked those men whatever Jesus says to do. And he says, all right, here's what I want you to do. Fill those water pots. Fill them up to the brim. Fill them up to the very top. Fill them up to the very top. Now, today I just want to share just a couple of things that I've been thinking about. And we think about what is in those water pots. And we just use mere water. They just filled it up with water. They didn't fill it up with anything special because they went out outside of town. They went down to the well. They picked those up, brought them back, and set them down. Only those men knew what was in those water pots. Now, think about that. All of us in here today have some water pots in our own lives. And you've been given the greatest advice ever been given. Whatever you're to do, do it heartily as to the Lord. He says, fill the water pots to the brim. What do you put in those water pots? Well, you know, when I first started thinking about this, I, I began to think about what would I put in my water pots. I think my worries, my concerns, my sicknesses, my sorrows. My sadness, my grief, my problems, my trials, my heartaches, my despair, my discouragement, my disbelief. I, I would want to put all those things in there. Because I, I would want to do put everything in there that I didn't need in my life. Everything that I didn't want in my life. And that's not what they were talking about. Because we've all got those. And here's what we need to be looking at as we put, fill it to the brim with what? Number one, we need to fill it to the brim with the Word of God. Fill it to the brim with the word of God. The book of Psalms 119 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin against God. So we put God's word in these water buckets. 
Let's fill this up with God's water. Let's fill the, the bucket up with, uh, to the very brim in our life with something very important, something very valuable, the Word of God. And my prayer is that we would fill it up with that important part of that place. Secondly, I would put prayer in one of them. Because there's nothing any more important that I do in my life than pray for someone else or pray for myself. Or pray to the Father. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. He tells us whatever we're going to do, do it all. He he says, keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. Don't miss that. Keep asking, keep seeking, and keep knocking. Now remember, this is the greatest advice that ever been given. Whatever Jesus says to do, do it. Fill the water pots to the brim. They're heavy, they're bulky. they're, they're, They're hard to carry. Sometimes a prayer life is hard to carry, isn't it? Keeping right with God, keeping right with God. Sometimes the Word of God is hard to carry. Sometimes when we really do what God says to do, there's going to be, have to be some changes in our own life. There's going to have to be some difficulties that we have to deal with. That's why we had those things in our life that we need to be getting and weeded out, if you will. Secondly, not only did we put prayer and the Word of God in there, but I want you to put a little bit of compassion. Compassion. One of my favorite stories in the Word of God is found in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. When Jesus saw all the people that day that had come, and he ministered to them. And the Bible says that he had compassion on them he hurt like they hurt his heart was broken like they were he said they were like a like sheep that was scattered that had no one to lead them so many times guys we don't have that opportunity in our own life we need a little bit of compassion because sometimes we forget how other people feel Sometimes we forget how other people are. Sometimes we're, we're so bullheaded that we don't see what God really wants for us. So we need a little compassion. The fourth thing uh, that I want us to put in there is our service. Our service. How are you serving Jesus? Put your service in there. Whatever you do, do it heartily as you do it unto the Lord. Give everything you've got to the Lord. Do what he says to do. He'll take care of it. But serve the Lord with gladness. Enter his courts with thanksgiving. Give honor and glory unto him. So not only do we do that, we find out the, the, the next part is concern. There, we need to have a little bit of concern for our fellow man. Concern. Fill it up to the brim with concern. Right up to the top. Right up to the very top. And the last one is love. The Bible says there's love. He says that's the greatest thing in all the world. When the Apostle Paul writes to us, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, He says, though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I'm become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. He says, he goes on to tell us all these different things about love. He says, now by the faith, hope, and what? Love. And the greatest of these is what, everybody? Love. We need some love. Because we're living in a society, in a world that has become selfish, self-centered, and about my way, and that's the way it is. Okay? And it's not. For the Christian, we need to fill up our water buckets, our water jugs, our water pots with those six things. Because we got all this other stuff in the world. We need to fill it up with the right stuff. But he said, fill it up with water. And they filled it up with water. And the Bible says these words. Now go back, if you will, to John chapter 2. And the Bible says, and Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Do what he says. If you and I will do what he says, we'll find out how faithful that God is. And the Bible says these words. And he said to them, To those men serving, draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast, and they bear it. 
So what happened was they took the, the main man, they got out of here, and the only guys who knew what was in this water bucket was Jesus and those men who served who went and got the water. They went to the well, they carried them back the bulky, heavy water that they'd carried back, and they got it back, and I'm sure there was a sweat broke out. I'm sure they got that stuff there. They set it down, and remember, it would have been precious because water was a commodity in those days. Water was very important in those days, but yet they had no idea that when they took a ladle and they took that ladle and poured it down in there and poured it into someone's cup that all of a sudden, just like that, it became the best wine they had ever drank in their life. And the governor took that. That's the guy that the, the head made her D, if you will. He's the head servant. He's the, the main hog, if you will, at the trough. He's the main guy making sure everything's right. And, and, and if you will, we'll call him the wedding planner, all right? He was there and hanging out, and, and as he was doing those things. He did everything that he was supposed to do, and when he, he, he didn't really even know that there wasn't much wine. He just was getting a little concerned. He says, this is going to be bad. This is going to be real bad. And so the Bible says that when the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which, knew, which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Now remember, they didn't go over to the tap and turn on the tap and water fell in it. Okay, they didn't do that. They, they had no, there, was, there was no taps back in the world. You had to go to the well. You had to take the bucket down to the well. And you had to dip it out. Now remember, we're talking 120 to 150 gallons of water. It's a lot of water. It's heavy. Someone said uh, in excess, I think Spurgeon, I was reading one of his sermons. I think it was him. And he said about 1,800 pounds. That's heavy. It would take 20 men to carry that much water. So they carried that water, and now it comes out. And he goes to the governor, and the governor goes to the bridegroom. He goes to the bridegroom and says, wow. He said to him, every man at the beginning, in verse number 10, does set forth good wine, the, the, probably the best at the beginning. He says, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, they kind of water it down a little bit. They kind of make it just a little bit less than what it ought to be. And so, you know, people are a little happy by then. They've drank a little bit too much, and they're enjoying that really good. And there's really a lot of joy on the inside. And, and so we find that the Scripture here says, he said, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it for his honor. Whatever you do, do it heartily. Whatever your job is, whatever you are attempting to do, when you were raising our family, it ought to be for the glory of God so that one day they'll do the same and it'll reciprocate. Continue to remember that whatever we're doing, we do it for the right reasons. When we're Working, we ought to do it for the right reason. You may be working for your boss and for a paycheck, but folks, you're doing it for God. You're a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are someone that he has placed in that position at this particular time for this particular reason and doing the very best that you can. You see, I'm going to ask you, will you obey the word of God today? Whatever he says, do it. Whatever the Bible says to do, let's just do it. Secondly, will, will you uh, fill up on what God's Word tells us to do? There's a lot of don'ts in the Bible. And we all know those don'ts. We all realize that those don'ts. And we get so discouraged because, oh man, Brother Kim, I I'm just find my life is in a turmoil because of all the don'ts in my Bible. Brother Kim, I don't get that. I'm my don'ts and I, I can't do this and I messed up with that. Yep, you're right. We're sinners, and that's our nature. But let's focus on the do's. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love people as you love yourself. Keep in mind that the water pots were to be filled to the top. Wouldn't there be anything left? You see, folks, if we fill those things up with love and compassion and the Word of God, and we fill those things up with, with the things that God would want us to, with service, with prayer, with concern. If we'll fill those things up, if we'll fill those things, we've not got much left in there 
to be able to do the otherwise. My prayer is that the church steps in, steps out, and continues on the journey just like we've never missed a beat. What happens is so many times we get bogged down. <laughs> we get bogged down by the heartaches and the difficulties. How do we honor our mom and dad? Jesus honored his mother here at this place. But most importantly, he honored his father, his heavenly father. And he did exactly what he had to say. What's in your water pots? What have you filled them up with? Have you filled it up with all the junk the world has to offer? Have you filled it up with the things that wouldn't honor him? You see, when we trade the joy of the Lord for the things of the world, I promise you, there's something here that never, never changes. There's a, that's a fountain flowing up inside of me. Even though discouragement comes, even though doubt comes, even though heartaches come, my prayer is today we fill up the water pots with exactly what the Lord said, the greatest advice ever given. Whatever he says to do, you do it. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Father, I love you this morning, and I am so thankful for the Word of God. Lord, when life seems to be so full of my worries and my concerns, my sicknesses and my sorrows, when sadness and grief just fill my life, Lord, when the problems and trials and heartaches and despair, the discouragement, the disbelief, the, 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 the doubting come into my life, Lord, I fill my water pots up with things that I shouldn't have filled them up with. Lord, when the small things of life become major things in my life, and when the major things in my life that come from you have become the small things in my life, it's time for a refocus. Lord, I pray today for every person in this room that we would refocus as we have regathered as a family of God. Lord, I'm praying for everybody here today to take the greatest advice that was ever given by Mary, the mother of Jesus. Whatever he says to do, you just do it. And dump out all the worries and all the cares and all the problems and all the difficulties and all the heartaches. I don't know about you, but where you are, right where you are, just talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I, I, I'm praying for wisdom, Lord. I'm praying to know what to do, Lord. I'm praying that I make right decisions and I listen to you. I'm praying, Lord, that as I ask and I seek and I knock. I'm praying, Lord, that in my prayer life that I fill up my life with prayer. I fill up my life with compassion to have a heart like Jesus. I fill my life up with service and doing whatever I do to do it for the glory of God. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that I would place the Word of God at the foremost part of my life. Lord, I pray that I would be concerned like the good Samaritan was for others. And Lord, I pray that my love would be greater than any, my, anything else I have in my life. It's my love for you and my love for others. As you sit there this morning, Cole and the guys and gals are going to start singing, so you let them sing and you talk to God. What's in your water pots? Who are you listening to today? Fill it up. Let's sing, guys. You pray. You are here Moving in our midst I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, Lord, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker. He's a way maker this morning. Promise keeper, light Promise keeper. in the darkness, my God, 
Oh my that goodness. Is who you are. That's who he is. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. What's inside your water pots? I worship What's inside the water pots of your life? Over in the I corner, hidden away somewhere. Over in the corner where nobody will ever find them. What's in there that shouldn't be there? Remove those things that shouldn't be there. Pour it out and allow, go to the well. Go to the Lord Jesus and allow Him to do what needs to be done in your life. Mending every heart. Sing it, everybody. I worship you. Let's worship Him. I worship you, Lord. Cause you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who. Maybe you need uh, your water pots filled. Maybe you need to allow the Lord Jesus to do in you what he wants to do. Maybe you just need to surrender. Give him your all. Man, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. Just turn to your neighbor and say, glad you came this morning. All right, do that real quick, okay? We're glad you came. Cole, tell us what's going on this week. All right. Hey, uh, Wednesday night, even though uh, we are beginning to meet physically, uh, we're still not going to host any activities on Wednesday night. So we're going to continue doing our drive through uh, food ministry. And so from 5 to 7 on Wednesday night, Brother Kim will be um, under the awning in the Family Life Center. He'll be handing out food this week. Um, our theme is breakfast. Um, so we're going to be giving away biscuits and gravy, ham, bacon, hash brown casserole, and some kind of dessert so we're excited about that um and uh, so be looking forward this week be watching our facebook page if things change um, we'll be sure to notify you of that um but real quick before i turn it back over to you uh, miss fake news over there that yelled i want to um congratulate and wish brother kim and miss lana um oh how many years is it 
39. 39 years yesterday, they shared their anniversary. So y'all give them a round of applause for that. Yeah, we uh, we had a great day yesterday. We, uh, to, this is a big weekend. It always has been a big weekend for us. Uh, uh, it's Lane. I have a new. I have a teenager as a grandson now. Lane Jody has turned 13, uh, and my goodness gracious, it's just hard to believe uh, that rascal's 13. Well, uh, we it was our anniversary yesterday, and we began our 27th year here at First Baptist Church uh, today. Is our day? Is our day? Is our anniversary date? So. Uh, it's been a blessing, and of course, it's Father's Day today, and I might get a present sometime. I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm praying, you know, uh, but, uh, but I love you guys. Thank you all so much for being here again today. Uh, we got those that's going to stay and clean for us so we get ready for our next service. We'd like you all that can go out this back door, this side door here and the side door over here. They'll usher you guys out, so uh, if you need to go out the back door, if you're physically you need to go out that back door you're hindered because walking too much don't don't go out the back door fellas let some of those guys out that need to go out and just help them out the back door if that's okay we didn't want anybody to be hurt by that I mean, but we're asking you to, to exit these doors and if you need to go out that door so not everybody goes out that door but thank you thank you so much for being here uh, we appreciate you we love you and we thank you so much Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock we're having midweek morning manna uh, senior adults have been coming. We've had 17, three, I think three out of the four Sundays we've, or Wednesdays we've been here. It's been really good. So thank you. Thank you for your financial support. Continue to uh, ask the Lord to bless. And so good to have uh, Ashley and uh, uh, Lucas and Owen here. We've had new babies every week. Uh, uh, last week it was Whitley and, and uh, Stella and Casey. And we're so excited to see these new babies. They always bless us. And they make me old, y'all. I'm telling you. I mean, kids having kids, all right? But uh, it's so good to see you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's all stand. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming. We love you guys and appreciate you so very much. If you need help or assistance, please let uh, one of our ushers know. They're here to help you. Uh, Keith, Richie, dismiss us in prayer today, all right?